Hello, all you sports fans out there, and welcome to the 10th episode of the season of Hot Seat Sports Talk. Guys, welcome back again. Your flannel's back again. I like flannels. Flannel season? It's always flannel season. What are you talking about? No shave November. It's that too. Yeah. It's going to get pretty long, probably down to the floor. No, I'm just kidding. Ryan Fitzpatrick kind? Better. Well, better. I expect that. All right. I want to see it. I'll be looking forward to that. And before we go on, please, please like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, shout out to Frazier's volleyball team again. They're in the district finals too. Whew, they're amazing. Good yeah. stuff. Good Blake job, Shore. Frazier. Good stuff. Hot seat headlines. Oh god. Oof, this would be interesting. Golden Tate traded from Detroit to Philadelphia for a third round pick. Matt Patricia said that in the long run, long run, this will be better for them. I'm I don't still know so mad up. Just I don't know how. This was probably one of the worst moves a team could make. This was terrible. Well, Who least. cares if he's got nine games left? Who cares? You yeah. try to extend them. You try. They gave. So they reworked Marvin Jones's contract. Oh, though. big deal. Yes. But I, that's just saying that's what happened due to that. But that's. I mean, whenever we needed a big time catch to happen, like late in the game when we we're pretty close, Golden Tate was always there for us. He was Gold. good for yards. Get Definitely good for yards. Field. He's a good Golden Tate against. Good at separation. Position. He's good at separation against his defensive back. He's a good possession receiver. Look at Golden Tate's game against Dallas. Yeah, Even though he didn't yeah. win, but he did amazing. But yeah, he had that touchdown side too many. I mean, I hope he does good in Philly because I like him as a player. He's a really good player, but he, he gets two buys. He's on a buy right now this week. Yeah, he was on That's a bye funny. week six. So funny. I think he'll do pretty okay. Philadelphia, there's going to be a lot of weapons for Wentz, but still, I wish Golden Tate was in Detroit. Here's the so. thing: Golden goes from being eh, one, one and two, to now number three. Well, I mean. It's Philadelphia has a bunch of good tight ends too, though. Yeah. That too. That doesn't help Tate's cause. Helps the Eagles probably, but it helps the Eagles, but it doesn't help him. I mean, just wish the best for you, Golden. Yeah. We're gonna miss you. Come back <laughs> after nine games. <laughs> Come back. It's okay. Uh, also on the trade deadline, Demarius Thomas traded from Denver to Houston uh, for a fourth and a seventh round pick. That was, that was very surprising. I was not expecting that. Here, and here's the funny thing. He gets traded to Houston, and Houston's at Denver this week. Yep. Awkward. Oh, yeah. But yeah, he gives more weapons for Deshaun Watson because his receivers have been getting injured. Will oh, Fuller yeah. injured again. Well, hopefully DT doesn't get injured. Kiki QB2 injured. So, oh, yeah, that would be. Oof. That would be cool. But for the thing for Denver, Emmanuel Sanders becomes the number one. Yes. Portland Sutton, number two. Number two. Here, number two. So it's, I don't know what that, I mean, that's the only team that the Maris Thomas has played for is Denver. That's the only yeah. team. Now he's going to play, go play for the Texans. Sean, so now it's Deshaun, DeAndre, and Demarius. That's pretty stacked, if you ask me, to be honest. That could be it, it could, dangerous. It, it could that could be dangerous you, if everything could, It could up. work out big, or it could work out... Bust. It could yeah. be bust. It could be. It could. Hopefully, don't we don't oh. see that. If Deshaun Watson goes down, it's done. That whole thing was that whole thing was a waste. Yep. So, more tra more trade deadline news from this past week. Packers trade Shahaha Clint Nix to Washington, and Ty Montgomery to Baltimore. This happens right after Montgomery messes up a play that could potentially give the Packers a win against the Rams. Potentially. It could. Who knows? It they could. Do anything. But still, that's pretty. Ironic, you could say. Like, it's made of if, iron? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, literary, the literary term, ironic. Okay. If he never would have fumbled, would he still be on the Packers? Would he not be in trade discussion? Would he still be traded? Who knows? But Okay, but out of all the trade deadline, Clay, Shahaha Clayton Dix was probably the one that you know, caught, me off, caught me off guard. Yeah. Most. It caught me off guard, too. Because that was probably one of the best Why? defensive players on Green Bay. I can he, see he probably Ty is Montgomery their had like a reason. like There was something behind. They told him to take happened. a knee in the end zone. He didn't. He brought he it did. out. He fumbled, and they lost the game. That's yeah. Ty Montgomery, yeah. Why did you get rid of, rid of Dix? Not, not, that wasn't too smart. They have to be, uh, what's the word? Re... Reasonable? No, not reasonable. They're like starting from scratch, 
What's restarting? Or Restar oh, no, <laughs> something. Rebuilding. Rebuild, rebuild mode. Rebuild, rebuild mode. Okay. They must rebuild be in rebuild mode, mode baby. That's what I'm thinking of. That old, though. Well, I mean, maybe they just... They've been in re Green Bay's been in uh, rebuild mode for a couple of years. That could be a two. Yeah. They're just still in the process of it. It started but. when they got rid of Jordy. Yep. When Jordy went yeah. to the one. Yeah. That hasn't worked out that well. And Jacksonville trades Dante Fowler Jr. to the Rams. Dante Fowler Jr. was the third overall pick a couple of years ago. Yep. Rams, Rams line is stacked. They are set. That move, I'm taking I'm telling you right now, that move right there will pay dividends to help Los Angeles win the Super Bowl. This Not year. even make the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. Wow. They don't. I mean, I don't there think they need him. There is nobody that can. They definitely didn't need him. Well, Green Bay. But it'll be gave an him, asset. Green Bay gave him a run for their money. They did. Yep. They definitely did. But they're 8 0. Until they go into play. No, now this week they go into play New Orleans in the Dome. That'll be it. Really good game. But when they go play Kansas City, that'll be the true test. Yes. That'll be the true test. But until then, that's a great move. Well, we obviously for the Rams, yeah. But I guess Jacksonville's in rebuild mode kind of too because of what's been happening this season. They're just definitely not they, living up to expectations. They definitely. started up here. Oh, no, with all and the hype. Literally and just crashed. Everything. Offense, defense. Even sky, is horrible. That's not a skyrocket. That's a, you know. Plummet. That's a plummet. That's a plummet. So, but yeah. let's see how Dante Fowler does on the Rams. Yeah, with Navik and Sue, Aaron oh, Donald. Oh, my lordy. Yep. <laughs> yep. And it's been a bad week again for Cleveland fans. This is interesting, actually. Browns yeah, fire head coach Hugh Jackson and offensive coordinator Todd Haley. Let's start with that first. Okay, so last season, how many games did Hugh Jackson win as a coach? None. How many games did he win this season? Two. He get he gets fired when having he also more wins and losses. He also tied two. So ties better than a loss. I don't like ties, but they're better than a loss. But I guess something's not in sync with Cleveland something's players now and the coaches and off definitely offensive coordinator. I can see that because they're definitely not performing as hype as they were presumed to be during the preseason, right? So I can see that. But the head coaching change or firing that really caught me off guard. Oh yeah, that, it definitely, yeah, it definitely caught me off guard. Um, I don't think this will help Cleveland at all win more games. No, it's not going to help them. And then the Cavs fire head coach uh, Tyron Lue. Tyron Lue. Yeah. That is not too surprising because they only won one game so far this season. I think. Yes. Especially because LeBron leaving, everything's different now. That Having that entire team game, just a just, mess. Yeah, it's a mess right now. I see that, but you know it's not a mess. Clay Thompson dropping fifty-two in Chicago. Whew. Thirteen for thirteen. He got cut in the head too. Puts on a bandaid, bandaid, uh, not bandana, headband over it. Bam! Still keeps shooting threes. Yep. He's that team is stacked beyond. He looked belief. a little bit like Javale McGee with that. He headband. did oh, curly yeah. hair, <laughs> curly hair headband. I don't like Clay with the long hair and the beard. It doesn't look like Clay. Fake well, it looks like Clay with longer hair and a beard. That's what it looks like. I don't like the new look. Well, I mean, if it's helping them it. win, then... Yeah, good for you. I'm with it. I'm with it, too. Well, in the West, they're, they're supposed to be powerhouse Houston Rockets are 1-5. Are they done? No, they're definitely not done. They're just in a soul start. Because a lot there's of teams lot of are really stacked this year. There's still 76 games left. Exactly. That's quick math for you, by the way. So but they go 77-5? and five. They're yeah. not going to no. have a losing record. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have a losing record. They probably won't be number one in the West this season. Probably not. There's a possibility, but probably not. But they're still going to be pretty good. It's just a slow start. Everybody's a slow start, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Well, you could, at least, but I mean, they're going to come back. Detroit started great, and now they're just... They lost two games, though. No, three. Um, they lost to the Nets, and then they lost Nets twice to Boston. Two to Boston. Yep. But, no, the Rockets are definitely not done. They have all-stars for days. And they could possibly... James the, Harden was out. Yeah, he was out too. So that's oh, yeah. a great James big factor. And they could even uh, trade rumors there's about for uh, Jimmy Butler. Yes, Jimmy Butler. If that even happens. But no, they're definitely not out. Definitely not out. Hmm. So, and the Spurs announced that they're going to retire Ginobili's number March 28th against Cleveland. I think that's well, Deserves obvious. It. Yeah, it's obvious. It's going to be cool. Question is, because the question is, will they retire Parker's? 
Not yet. Or he's still playing. Right, but when he's done, I'd say there's a good chance. Just say he, just say he didn't. You know, Charlotte's the last team. You know, just say he signs the one day, retires a spur. Will they retire? Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker all next to each other. Yep, that could definitely happen. I can see that. Yeah, for sure. I can definitely see Parker. Well, it's Parker. Robinson, Duncan, Ginobili, Parker. Well, yeah. yeah, but I definitely can see Tony Parker's never being retired yeah. in time as well. Well, well, time will tell. Definitely, definitely. Well, then, NBA Saturday. Detroit, after starting 4-0, they've lost three in a row. Time to turn around. Two to Boston, and they lost by one in overtime to Brooklyn. Oof. On Halloween, they lost to Brooklyn. But when you look at it, their losses are pretty close. At least they're fighting. Except for the, the fir- first game. Well, the first Boston. game, yeah. That was but other than that, they've been pretty close. Yeah, they they're bounce. fighting. They're yeah, they fighting. bounced back against Philly. They won this one. They kept it close with Boston at once. I feel like that first game against Boston, that just kind of... I think those four days apart, in between They started them. to come back together. Mm-hmm. Those four days in between helped them to prepare for Boston again? But once, yeah, once Boston... Once they had that second game with Boston, they were there... Fourth quarter, last 10 seconds, lost it. They just lost focus. Yep. I feel like that's all that happened there. Yeah, Blake Griffin with that lovely inbounds pass. Him and Ish Smith were not on the same page. No. Not on the same page at all. There was just lack of communication. That was pretty lack much Lack of it. focus looking at each other. Yep. Right. Oh, yeah, Yeah, exactly. In this game, though. Detroit. Oh, I have to go to Detroit, though. But it's going to be tight. I can see going either way, but I'll go to Detroit. Drummond stops and beat. Ooh, Ooh, that'd be a good fight. But hopefully MB doesn't get him riled up again or fouled out. Yeah, that was horrible. Oh this, is gonna be, flop. this is going to be this is going to be big down low with the big men. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. just because of what happened last game. Oh, all right, real quick for our last three: New Orleans, after a pretty strong start, they're at San Antonio with Anthony Davis back. He's this will fire. be an interesting game. So, but, is, so is Demar Derozan. Well, San Antonio's also really. Never. Yes, but yeah, I know who I'm going with. I can go either or. I'm gonna go with New Orleans. Boo. I don't know. I'll go New Orleans. Drew Holiday. Boo. Drew Holiday's a beast. Uh, Anthony Davis. Their cent- I forgot who their center was. Mirtich. He's a beast. Oh my gosh. Yep. I can I see can either go, or. But I'll go New Orleans. I can go on and on, but for time constraints, I want to save it. Well, Boston, I know you Bo- can. Boston and Indiana. No question, Boston. 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 Lakers at the Trailblazers. Trailblazers. I haven't heard much about Portland this season. They're good. They're good? They're still living yeah, up to last season. Good. Yes. Then I'll take Portland. Port- D. Lillard and C.J. McCollum. Definitely. All day. College football. Uh, finals from week nine. Obviously, West Virginia won big. Like yes. said last week. Notre Dame won big over Navy like we all predicted. Yep. Michigan State took care of business against Purdue 23-13. Hey, nice. Did what? they not play Brian Wilworky, by the way? They didn't play him? Or they eventually? Technically, they did. They did play Brian Lewerke. He held all the field goals and extra points. There you go. Special teams. Yes. So but he who did threw play. the ball and really won the game? Not the well, special teams. Not the Rocky special Lombardi teams. did. There you go. All right. Um, that was a good Washington call. State, surprisingly, beat Stanford 41-38. This That's Washington State one. team's underrated. Definitely. Yes. They're definitely underrated this season. Oh, yeah. Penn State beats Iowa. It's closer. 30-24. closer. And Georgia. They needed 36 this. 36-17. They needed Thank this. Thank you. They I was the only one who took Georgia last week. So, it sets up for week 10. Michigan State at Maryland after Maryland fires their head coach. I think that was the right call for them. Yes. Honestly. Yes. Too much turmoil. Protesting what's going to happen. He obviously made horrible decisions. I think that was the best yeah. choice. But when it comes to this game, not talking about... Well, the politics behind it all, I'm going to pick Michigan State. 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 There you go. We have two very good SEC matchups this week. Number six, Georgia, and number nine, Kentucky. <sighs> Kentucky's really good this season. Shouldn't that be like a basketball game or something? Uh, Not a football, football game. It's football, but still taking Georgia. Georgia. Taking Kentucky. Whoa. Respect. Explanation? Out of nowhere. Okay. All right. They're a basketball school. That's what they're most known for. All right. If they the, can come here with football. Let's say, all right, let's see it. All right. The big one. Number one, Alabama. At number three, Louisiana State. This is what I was talking about earlier. LSU. LSU. Ride or die. World Tide. I'm taking Alabama on this, this one. This will be a great game. This is going to be big. This is going to be a great game. 
we're going to see and how see how good Alabama's offense really is against a really pretty good LSU defense. Yes, oh, definitely. We'll see how good LSU's offense is against a very really good Bama. No matter what, I will not be surprised with whoever wins or loses because of how good of a matchup. Could this be a playoff? You know, I don't know because if one of these teams lose, they may not see each other in the college True. football playoff they bracket. Could. Well, they with could. how the bracket is. Well, they could. They could. Depending on how the rest of the season goes for them, obviously. But it's possible. But right now, I don't see it. All right, At least yep. as of now. Number 13, West Virginia. And number 17, Texas. After Texas goes down to Oklahoma State last week. I think this should still be a close matchup. Texas is going to want – Texas is going to be fired up. Well, we know he's going to take him. Texas. Uh, West Virginia. But I'm going to go Texas. I've talked about how they've been good this season, so I'll take Texas. Okay. Yeah. Put it down. Okay. <laughs> number 14, Penn State at Michigan. I mean. Hard to beat somebody two times in one season. Oh, yeah, crap. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take State Michigan. Is... Not surprised you said that. You know already where I'm going. You know yep. where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know what you're doing. Yeah. You're taking the L. Ooh. I'm, I'm ta- no, I'm not. I'm taking Michigan for this one. Yeah. You are? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Breaking news. All right. He picks Michigan one. for something. All right, a fun one. I Air love, Force, Air Force, and Army. I love these games. Okay, who wins this one? Army. Air Force. I Uh-oh. go. I go Army. 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 Air Force. All right. Just because. Well, even though Air Force, Air Force looked good against Navy. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't mean that they're gonna yeah. look good against Army. I got Army in this. I'll one. agree with that. I'm still yes. Air Force. National Football Week. Football. Week number. Nine. I don't know why you whispered, so I'm just going to say nine. All right. Minnesota, after losing by 10 to New Orleans last Sunday night, at home against Detroit. After the, you know, rebounding chemistry Detroit Lions team. <sighs> okay. Detroit. Hmm. You guys Minnesota's lost the favorite, so Detroit's obviously the underdog. Yeah. This is tough for me. Because Detroit needs to come back after a horrible loss to Seattle. I mean, goodness gracious. Come on. I don't want to say it, but... I don't think Detroit's going to win. Minnesota's going to win this Yeah, game. I, got, Minnes- I'm I got Minnesota. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, God. I'm Minnesota. It's going to come down to that loss of Tate. Yes. Without a doubt. Kansas City, after another impressive win. Locking them in. At Cleveland. That's your lock. I'm locking in Kansas City. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll take Kansas City as my lock too. I wonder who I'm gonna pick. Cleveland? No, Kansas City. Oh, okay. I'm Kansas City. Uh, don't be surprised for Cleveland to put up a fight, though. Oh, definitely. Oh, I definitely. hope so. I a hope game that they're not supposed to be close with, they'll put up a fight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch that. And Pittsburgh Archer. at Baltimore. These are amazing games to watch. I'm taking Pittsburgh. These are amazing games to watch, and I'm gonna pick Pittsburgh. I am taking James Conner and the Pittsburgh Steelers. All day, James. Even though Baltimore's got a good defense, it doesn't matter. James Conner's going to run all Up and down of this. lately. I know they're good, but yes. I think Pittsburgh's going to light them up. Tampa Bay and now it's Magic at Carolina. This is my lock. This is going to be a high-scoring game, and I really hope it is for both teams. I hope it's not, because I want to see Fitzpatrick have another amazing week. But I still want them to lose. I hope I hope McCaffrey goes off. I hope he does too, and not Cam Newton. Hey, Carolina for Carolina. Yeah, I just want Cam Newton. I'm not concerned about my fantasy team. Hey, I want Cam Newton. Carolina, Carolina's gonna light him up. Tampa Bay's defense has been horrible. That's why they're my lock. But in terms of taking, I say the Fitz Magic stays for one more game. I'm going with Tampa Bay. Wow. Yeah. Well, why not? The New York Jets. At the Miami Dolphins. Miami is minus three. I'm going to pick Miami on this. I'm rolling with Miami. Still don't trust J-E-T-S. the Jets yet. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. I'll take New York. All right. Um, Atlanta traveling to Washington. Washington's, Washington's the favorite, surprisingly, minus one and a half. They've been a sleeper team all season. And one of the major Washington? factors yep, is Adrian Peterson. Yes. He's yeah. very, very, very good this season. Even though Peterson did not practice on 
Thursday. This is, he did not practice Thursday. He gets days off, though. This I is thought. his comeback season. No, they said it's some type of health problem. Oh. I feel like this is going to be his big comeback season. So far, it's been like that. I have a feeling this is this is finally the game Julio Jones gets in the end zone. Really? Not just once, I'm but not, not even once. Even with Ha Ha Clinton Dix joining the Redskins? Not, not once, but twice. I'll give him one. Julio with two. I'll give him a two-point conversion. Julio, <laughs> Julio with two touchdowns. Hey, he still technically and, finds the end zone in that. Yeah. And Julio with two touchdowns and one Atlanta win. I'll take Atlanta on the win. Right. Take Atlanta. Atlanta. Chicago going to Buffalo. Okay, Buffalo. Okay, they looked like... I don't know what they were doing on Monday night. On they held first, the Patriots they, down. On their first drive, it felt like I was watching high school football. With all with, with Ivory taking snaps and McCoy taking snaps, yeah, that it, no, that can't that can't that can't fly. Chicago. I will give them credit; they did hold New England. The Bills offense, defense did. Yes, to twenty five. That the touchdown was because of the offense. It was a pick six. Yes. Well, that's... the rest of it was all field goals, all field goals. I'd rather hold them to field goals than touchdowns. There yeah. were more field goals in the game than there were touchdowns. There's only one touchdown. For exactly. Fiat Gaskowski, good job. Oh, yeah, definitely. But no, it's, but that kind of offense is not going to fly. No, uh, and Chicago's Chicago. still no. Chicago. Chicago. Denver in the now, you know, the Marius thomas list Broncos, at home against Houston, Houston. who just got the Marius Thomas. Houston's going to have a game. That's why they're my upset. Lamar Miller is going to have himself a day with two touchdowns and 100 yards rushing. Wow. Houston wins this game. I think Houston wins. By more than 10. That's my Houston's upset. Houston's got it. That's not my upset. It's not mine. Uh, next one. The Chargers are back after coming off the bye. Fine. All right. They're at Seattle. Ugh. At okay. Seattle. And after coming fine. off the win against Detroit for Seattle, they don't keep it rolling. Phillip Rivers... Again, Phillip Rivers has thrown over 300 yards per game this year. Most underrated fantasy quarterback there is. And he's going to prove the haters wrong again today, or on Sunday. <laughs> I don't think there's any haters, but I'm still going to take the Chargers. Prove the doubters wrong. I'm taking the Chargers. Why they should have drafted him. Chargers, not as my upset, though. Chargers. The next one is my upset. The Rams are the underdog going into New Orleans. New Orleans gets one and a half. The Rams will be undefeated. They yes. are my upset. Well, I mean, how can you not pick Greatest, the Rams no matter who they're I'm playing? The Rams. Greatest show on surf. That's their new thing. When they were St. Louis in yeah. 2001, it was the greatest show on turf. So now it's the greatest show on surf. They are on the coast. Yes. <laughs> they're right by the ocean. That's okay. Uh, Sunday night football. This will be a great game. Now this will game. be good. Great game. I'm ready for this. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Against Brady and the Patriots. New England minus six. This one's tough. This one is. This one's my upset. Ooh. Say it. Green Bay over New England. No, he's gonna say New England's the upset when they're the favorite. Really, you just wrote the whole movie, man. I, I, know, I know. I, I know. I'm sorry. Green Bay over New England. Yeah. Ty Montgomery's gone. Clinton they don't. They don't. Jones. All right. That means somebody else has to step up. This is exactly. going to be the game where somebody shows here's, up and they here's my take fill on the one. roles. Here's my take on Green Bay. You got Rod, you got Rodgers. Yes. You don't have that great of a running back core. You don't. You don't have a great receiving core either. You have Devontae Adams, and that's about it. The rest of the wide receivers have been stepping up, though. Yeah. And you have Jimmy Graham, who's disappeared. Oh, he's been a bust this season. Yep. No, not even like talking about fantasy-wise, just player-wise. He's... He's no. disappointed. Yes, he's what been happened disappointed. to the New Orleans Saint Jimmy Graham that we knew? Honestly, what happened to him? The My, Green Bay doesn't have enough weapons. Rodgers can't do this by himself. That's why I'm going with New England. The only reason I'm picking New England is because they're home. Otherwise, That's if it was a neutral field, right. I could say it's go either way. Uh, Monday Night Football in a very um, not entertaining game. Tennessee at Dallas. Dallas. Tennessee Dallas winning this game. Dallas. All right, there you go. Dallas. They should have made Green Bay New England Monday night. Yes. Just saying. All right. Fantasy zone. 
I had, the, I had the starts. Yes. For quarterback, you had to start Jared Goff versus the Saints. He scored 26.5 fantasy points versus the Packers last week. Right. That was very good. And the Saints have allowed 23.7 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks on their home turf, on New Orleans' home turf. And then you also have to start Kirk Cousins versus the Detroit Lions. He's coming off of his best fantasy week since week four last week. And QBs average at least 18 fantasy points. That's like the minimum they pretty much score. And 117.2 passer rating against the Lions. So look wow. for those two to go off fantasy-wise. All right, for me, I... I'd say, I'd say you, Chargers are going to Seattle. If you have Russell Wilson, you bench him. The Chargers are still a menace on defense. They have a great line, right? They have a great line. They're still a top-10 defense. Russ, you know, even though Seattle looked good against Detroit with Russell Wilson having uh, four touchdown passes? Three. 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 Three, three. three touchdowns against the best pass Defense secondary in football. Look for, you know, it's not going to work against the Chargers. So sit, sit Russell Wilson, bench Mitch Trubisky. You know, Buff at Buffalo. You know they see. You guys saw what they did to okay. Brady. The Brady, they he didn't score, he didn't throw for one touchdown. Oh. Yep. So Trubisky, Correct. it's not it's not going that's not going to be you know good in Buffalo. And I probably. And I say bench uh, Joe Flacco against Pittsburgh. All right. Said Joe Flacco against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's defense is okay. They're okay. They've given up a lot of touchdown passes, though. Yes. But Pittsburgh, since Pittsburgh's going to come out, come away with this one, Flacco's not going to have a good day. Baltimore's been struggling a little bit, not too much. Running backs. You have to start Latavius Murray versus the Lions. I know we're talking about Vikings, but they're going to probably go off. He's been scoring at least 20 PPR points in each of his last three games. And the Lions surrender at least, that is horrible, 29 fantasy points per game to Ooh, running that's backs. Bad. That's not good that's at all. Bad. And then, like you said earlier, start Lamar Miller versus the Denver Broncos. He's been on fire the last two weeks. It's about with time With a he's combined 233 yards and two touchdowns in those two weeks. Yes. And the Broncos have allowed 125.1 rushing yards per game to running backs this season. you got to start those two. All right. I'm, I'm going – I'm sitting – I'm sitting uh, Phil Lindsay this week. From the Broncos. Against Houston. Houston, what, look what they did. Even though last week on Thursday night, Kenyon Drake had one rushing and one receiving. Mm-hmm. Receiving, that's, receiving is what it is. But rushing, one touchdown for Kenyon Drake. Yes. Who's used to putting up eh, pretty pretty good number, pretty good rushing stat against these t- these type of teams. So, yeah, you know, I, I'd bet him. Um... Let's see, Christian McCaffrey, that's that's still that's still a start. Christian McCaffrey is still a start. Bench, bench. Uh, even though he had a heck of a game last week, and he looks great, bench Chris Carson. Chris Carson ate up Detroit. He did. Yes. He, the way that he ran the ball was just unbelievable. But again, he's playing against the Chargers. It won't be easy. Sit, Chris Carson, and if you have it, you know any New England backs, be cautious, be cautious, be cautious, be cautious of Barner, be cautious of White. Even though White has been unbelievable, be aware of that pesky Green Bay defense. Receivers. Wide receivers. Let's start. Brandon Cooks versus the New Orleans Saints. The Saints have given up eight touchdowns and an average of one hundred seventy. 172.4 yards per game to wide receivers this season. Oh, man. And then the Saints defense, they also give up the most PPR points to wide receivers lined out wide this season. That's, no, you got to start Brandon Cooks. And then you also start Julian Edelman versus the Green Bay Packers. He posted his best stat line this season with 20.7 PPR points last week. And then, wait, no, not last week. It was <laughs> just the best stat line. And then. Packers defense have allowed more than seven catches and 100 yards per game to slot wide receivers. And lines up in the slot. Just look for Julian Edelman to go off this time. Yeah. Well, here's my first sit, which is pretty surprising. I'm going to go sit, sit Demarius Thomas in this game against Denver. Ooh. He just got traded midweek. I agree with that. He just got traded midweek, right? Uh, it's going to take him a little bit to know. New playbook. New playbook. His snaps are going to be limited. He's not going to be in there as much as DeAndre Hopkins is. 
I be cautious with I be cautious with him. Be cautious be cautious with Reynolds from Los Angeles. Again, he had two touchdowns last week against Green Bay. Rams got too many weapons. Oh, definitely. Woods, Cooks, Cup. Now Reynolds. Gurley. Gurley. Yep. Gurley scored a touchdown in every game this year. That's got to be And counting back the last year. At least one. At, At least, least one. one. That's got to make fantasy owners pretty happy. I am oh, happy. But you got to be happy with James Conner, too. Oh. So, oh, yeah, yeah, you have to be happy with him, too. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, sit, uh, Devin Funches this week against Tampa. Even yes. though Tampa Bay has the worst pass defense in the league. They really do. It's bad. It's bad. Um, yeah, just be, ca- just be cautious. Devin Funches, he's not getting as many targets as he used to. No. He's, he's not. He's not. They're, run, they're running the ball with McCaffrey more. Newton's targeting Olsen more. Olsen back. came back. Yeah. That was what did it. Yeah, that, that took away his targets. Yep. That took away his targets. Be, ca- yeah, be cautious of that. And finally, uh, be cautious of any Miami receivers, especially with Osweiler. Be cautious of that. Tight ends. You just said it literally like 10 seconds ago. you got to start Greg Olsen. Yes. He scored a touchdown and 15 fantasy points last week. And the Bucks get hammered against slot, receiver, uh, slot receivers. And Olsen lines up in the slot 66% of the time. And then, even though it's a little shaky, David Njoku is still a good tight end. He's been productive with Baker Mayfield this season, as we've talked about earlier. Well, not earlier, throughout the season. And then yeah. enemy tight ends average almost 75 yards and the fifth most points against Kansas City. So look for those two to go off. All right. Same matchup, you bench both these tight ends. You sit, Jimmy Graham. Yes. And you know what? I gotta say, you gotta. Be, ah, it's tough. It's tough. If you have someone else to play, play him. If not, you have to sit Gronk, because, because, look at the way that he played last week. Not that many targets. I mean, Brady, when Brady would throw the ball to him most of the time, it was either over his head, behind him, he'd drop him. Yep. He dropped one in the end zone on third and goal in the yep. first quarter. So, I don't know if you know if New England now has way too many weapons with James White, Edelman, Gordon, you know all you know all these guys. Just be cautious of Gronk in the next com- coming coming uh, coming weeks. I agree with that. Sit Michael Roberts against Minnesota. Remember on how he you know a couple weeks ago we thought oh Michael Roberts is great. He caught two touchdowns against Miami. Two out of three were the through two out of three receptions were touchdowns. And yeah. did he do anything at Seattle? No. Nope. Nope. So he's not gonna do anything here. The Bears defense is amazing, as we said off season. Oh, oh, That's why we're gonna start defense. against Buffalo. Because Buffalo's offense is just not good. They give up twenty nine sacks this season and they turn over the ball more than twice, uh, two times per game. I mean right. come on, the Bears just are amazing. And then this is surprising. You should start the Dallas Cowboys defense versus the Titans. The Titans allow an average of 3.1 sacks per game, and enemy defenses average more than 9 fantasy points per game against the Titans. So look for that Dallas sleeper defense to come in handy for you this week. Well, all right. I'm going to say you bench Green Bay's defense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's going to be a shootout up in Foxborough. That's going to be a barn burner. It's a barn burner. I know, that's an old term for you. <laughs> um, uh, it's... It's not going to be a good day if you have Green Bay's defense, and you bench the Rams' defense this week. I know. You bench the Rams because they're going to New Orleans. You're playing in the Superdome. All Most games, most of the time in the Superdome, are shootouts and barn burners. So, and give up a lot of it, and don't give up a ton of touchdowns to this Drew Brees offense. You know, it's, it's not going to be a good day for him. And you bench Denver's defense against Houston. Like you said, Lamar Miller is going to have a good day. DeAndre Hopkins will have a good day. And Deshaun Watson will have a good day. Sure. There, that's, that's not even going to be close either. So be cautious of Denver's defense. And again, I stay, I'd be cautious of Baltimore's defense this week too. Yeah. Both to be great, but now so look at James Conner, look at Antonio Brown, you know, Big Ben and Antonio Brown finally connecting again. Much dirt to put up some points against Baltimore. Yeah, they should. All right, kickers. Last part. You got to start Matt Prater versus the Vikings. 
The Vikings have allowed the fourth most field goal attempts to kickers this season. And Prater's looking to bounce back after a horrible two point performance last week against the Seahawks. Nothing you can do. So look for Prater to go off this week. And then you also start Mason Crosby versus the Engl uh, New England Patriots because, like we said, the shootout. And he's been scoring 11 or more fantasy points in three of his last four games ever since that bad performance. But that's all behind us. And the New England's defense has allowed nine fantasy points per games to kickers this season, at least. So look for those real, two to go off. Real quick for me, bench Greg Zerline. Oh, the right. Okay. The Saints. The Saints. The Saints. They don't give up that many points to kickers. They really don't. They really don't. Set McManus against Houston. Houston again with that strong defense, and Denver's offense won't be able to win the ball that much this coming week. And I'd say uh, bench Dan Bailey. Bench. Uh, Dan Bailey's not been doing that great. He's, he hasn't been the most accurate kicker that he was in Dallas. Kickers haven't really been there this year. Not at all. It's horrible. The past two years, it's it's not good. It's not good. We need to yeah. fix this for the brand. Straight for the brand. Uh, that's it. Wow. Congratulations, Boston. World, World Series, Series champions. champions. Ha! Oh, yeah. I almost not called the Dodgers. It, almost called the sweep. But it all came down to the 13th inning in game three. Yeah, plenty of bosses going on. Game was okay. Like, here's my here's game. my last here's my last remark before we have to go. Dodgers, they were like 12 games under 500 in May. They Turn, finished. They turned it around. They had they, a great finish. They had a winning record. They won the division. Ran the table, made the World Series. Did they back win the World back Series? Back-to-back back years. Did they win no, the World Series? No, they didn't, but, they, but the fact that they, they had it. that type of a season and made the World they Series made. was impressive. Congrats, congrats to all the Detroit Tigers on Boston. There you go. Finally won yeah. the World Series. Chris Sale had an amazing oh, nice yes. inning. Oh, yes. Yeah. Beautiful pitching. A, ooh, well, he's a lefty. <laughs> Ooh, and we're out of time. Martinez, and, solo oh, yeah. We will be back November 16th. Yep, a little bit of a break. It's a break for me. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be watching most of, most of these games down by the pool in Florida, so this will be fun. Yeah. So, until then, until then, don't, not yet. Check out Moneyball Sportswear. And Sam Martin, apologies, we ran out of time. Until then, keep it fresh.